can now go to project uh, number four, which is millimeter rotational lines as powerful diagnostics of the physical conditions inside a giant molecular cloud, the Orion B case. Mm. Good uh, afternoon, everyone. So this is project for, um, well, we put some pictures so you know who we are. Uh, so the one of the goals for of our project is to get um, different techniques to estimate the column density than the classical ones. So the what are the usual uh, techniques to estimate the column density? One is uh, from dust continuing emission observations. So for this, we have to keep in mind that um, the dust in the unmolecular clouds emits in the far infrared. So this is between uh, 70 microns and uh, more than 500 microns. So for this, we need a space telescopes and there's none of them um, planned for the next decades. If we don't have telescopes to do this, uh, we move to a, an other option that is to use the um, CO intensity using the CO to H2 conversion factor. Um, uh, with this factor has like the problem that it has a 30% uncertainty in the inner disk of the Milky Way, and it is also metallicity dependent. So we need an alternative method with less uncertainty from ground-based uh, telescopes. And for convenience, we are gonna use the visual extinction as a proxy of the column density in this project. Uh, so, and in the use case we had, uh, we used uh, data from the Orion B cloud from the IRON telescope, which you can see here. And uh, we had a one squared dream map across the full three millimeter band with a rather good angular resolution. You can see an example over here. And as Miriam just said, uh, we um, need a different way to estimate the column density. And um, for that, you can see on the left hand side now the um, 12 CO in correlation to the dust AV. And you see that there is indeed a linear correlation indicated by this um, dashed line over here. But you also see that it's not uh, sufficient because it doesn't um, go through the whole range we want to uh, tackle to see uh, the column density because we have this strong uh, saturation effect over here. And so the idea is to use not just one line, but several lines, for example, these here, to um, and from all of them get together um, a, a better picture and create somehow a linear dependency to calculate the column density in the end. So we have a large data set of our molecular line intensities from the Orion B region, and uh, we are interested if there are any relation between the uh, different lines intensities and uh, they ask uh, on the question uh, if there are any clusterization of our multidimensional data uh, we can use the method the principal component analysis it is the method uh, based on the singular value decomposition of the data and allows to ask the question if there uh, any um, clusterization of our data. So for example, you can see the 2D data, um, which is um, elongated along the main principal component and orthogonal uh, to the main principal component, you can find the second. It is uh, clearly seen on the 2D data, but uh, for the 12D data, it's more complex. So we applied the uh, principal component analysis to our observations and we obtained the tight correlation between the uh, first principal component and the uh, dust extinction. So as you can see on the left plot, the, our data projected on the first principal component is clearly ref reflects the uh, visual extinction map. And now to quantify uh, a bit this difference of performance between the a method of estimating the visual extinction with this XCO method and, and then the PC1 method, um, we, we see that the R squared, which is uh, any, any quantifier like for the linear regression, is much better for the PC-based 
method than for the XCO one. And this is explained by the fact that there is no saturation effect on the on the PC on the PC one uh, graph. If we look at the residuals on the right, which basically are the difference between the predicted uh, visual extinction and the true one, uh, we can see that for the PC method, we have no systematic error, which means no bias. And there, the variance of the error is quite low. While for the XCO based method, there is a systematic error uh, and the variance is quite high. So this is why it's better to use the PC based uh, method than the XCO one. So to summarize, we have used uh, 12 line intensities and all, and we find that uh, the principal component analysis works better than uh, the traditionally used methods. Uh, we have analyzed the first three principal components and looking at the line contributions, uh, the individual line contributions to each of these uh, components, we see that they trace respectively the column density, the bulk density, and the FUV radiation that is characteristic of PDR regions. Uh, further, looking ahead, we can continue to uh, analyze and interpret the higher principal components, and uh, this should give us more insight into the other physical properties. But the uh, challenge that this is going to pose is uh, regarding the uh, potential non-linearities in the relations, um, and hence we may have to make use of uh, other techniques like random forests. Also, it's very important to identify which of these lines are most significant so that such studies can be extended to other clouds where as many line intensities may not be available. So with that, we conclude our presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So I don't see any questions. So you showed a map of AV and I was wondering um, how uh, reliable it is because uh, I mean, there are a lot of things that happen uh, on grain physics in dense regions. So uh, how did you uh, get this AV? Maybe I, I missed it. We didn't get it. So the, the AV that uh, we compare with our results, like with the PC1 and uh, the XCO uh, is from a paper. So it's from a Lombardi work and we take it and compare with our um, uh, results. It's not that we computed it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and I was also curious about, so you, it's nice because you, you, were, you managed to find a, a physical interpretation in, uh, in your first three PCA components. And I was wondering if you tried to go a bit beyond the first three, because uh, in this kind of giant molecular clouds, uh, I'm always puzzled about the fact that the feeding factor may also play a role in some way. So I don't know if you try to investigate that. Uh, no, we actually didn't have a chance to go beyond the first three principal components. So these are the three that we've looked at. Okay. Thank you.